So one thing I forgot to mention at the end of the last video is that um, often in order to make a stem and leaf plot, you end up having to round your data because you need the stems and the leaves to work out so that the leaf was always one decimal place to the right of the stems, and that's not always appropriate for data sets. So that can mean that there's a lot of rounding going on, and that's generally not a good thing because if you're rounding, then you're automatically losing accuracy, which means, you know, in some ways a table would have been better. All right, another issue is that if you get data bunched up or if there's just a lot of data in the data set, um, bunched up meaning like, like this one where a lot of stuff is mushed into you know, the 10s and the 20s and 30s, um, what will happen is that you can often split the stems in order to get a better picture of what's going on, in order to tease what's going on or tease it out for those particular um, classes. What happens is you take the first number to take the lower numbers, 0 through 4, and then the second stem will take the higher numbers, 5 through 9. Another issue is that Excel, of course, doesn't make stem and leaf plots on its own, but you can use it as a glorified typewriter if you so choose. But what might be quicker and easier is to use a program such as StatCrunch, which all of you have available for free um, if you're one of the Math 133 students at JCC. It's available in my math lab. And Minitab is a program that I and other statistics instructors use a lot. So you have to know how to read them. Um, you could, of course, go buy the program if you felt like it, but um, it's unnecessary because you have StatCrunch at your disposal. But these programs, both of them and, and all the others that are out there, there's tons of them. You could go get a free app. You know, Google Stem and Leaf Applet. You'll, you'll find tons of them. But anyway, um, they will often just split the stems on you without asking your permission and there's really nothing you can do about it. So that, that kind of is not fun. <laughs> All right, so let's go over how to make this stem and leaf plot because, I mean, they're kind of tedious to make on your own. So let me show you. So if you were going to sit here and type it yourself, let, let me just show you what that would look like. So you'd have to type, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oops, 5, 6. And then you'd have to make sure your data is in order and then go 6, 7, 8. Then you have a 0, a 2, a 3, a 4, and so on, right? But what if you wanted to split the stems, and that would make your life even more difficult? So you need a 0, 0, a 1, a 1, a 2, a 2, a 3, a 3, a 4, right? All this is coming out to be a giant mess with a lot of typing, right? So there's got to be a better way, and there is. I'm going to show you how to do it. So you go to my math lab, you go to your statistics class, and then over here in the left, there's Tools for Success. Click on that. Click on StatCrunch. See it right there? Now, StatCrunch is a program that's a really awesome program, and it's available for free in a modified version for you guys. So you can click on Data Sets. I mean, it has data sets from your book sitting in here, right? But we want the data set we were working with, which are these quiz grades. So I'm going to highlight all of them copy and I'm going to bring them in here and I'm going to paste oops I forgot hold on you only want the numbers don't bring the word grades it won't work so highlight the numbers copy and of course I've already typed all the numbers up if you haven't typed them then you're going to have to do that and then backspace and type grades or type quiz grades or quiz scores whatever you want to type I'll type quiz scores there we go then you go to graphics click stem and leaf plot and it's going to say okay well, what do you want to make a stem and leaf plot of and we want quiz scores so I click on that you can see it's going to select quiz scores then go down here to, to next and we want no outlier trimming so click none not in our class and click create graph and there it is stem and leaf plot beautifully made just like the one that was in the notes see I just copied and pasted it in. That's it. Now, if you want to put it into an Excel spreadsheet, what you do, because it won't paste prettily, so you go to Insert, pick a text box, make yourself a big text box, and then just paste into that. And there you go. Beautiful. Um, a text box is, is a nice way. It's sort of making like a little space for Microsoft Word inside your Excel file. It makes it um, easy for you to copy and paste and have it keep that formatting that was there on the stack crunch oops over here there that formatting is kept in Excel when you use a text box so use the insert text box menu 